tonight on NJTV News, stocks have tanked and the global downward spiral may signal a volatile market for weeks to come. Expect to have your bag checked at the movies. Increasing violence down south has led to increased security up here. An old water structure, infra water infrastructure may contain more than storm runoff. Commingled wastewater has cities scrambling to build new pipes. And these bathing beauties field tested a suburban backyard and won. <laughs> Those stories and more next on NJTV News. Major funding for NJTV News provided in part by Barnabas Health. Life is better healthy. Online at BarnabasHealth.org. The Star Ledger and NJ.com. Wells Fargo. Together we'll go far. And by New Jersey Realtors, the voice for real estate in New Jersey. More information is online at njrealtor.com. Live from the Agnes Varis NJTV studio at Two Gateway Center in Newark, this is NJTV News with Mary Alice Williams. Hello, thank you for joining us. The closing bell rung out Wall Street's worst week since 2011. The Dow Jones Industrial Average clobbered by its ninth steepest point drop in stock market history. What does the head spinning slide mean for New Jersey companies and mortgages? Here's Brenda Flanagan. Today's closing bell finally put Wall Street out of its agony after a double down week that saw stock markets plummet across the globe, driving the nosedive flailing economies in Greece and China, tanking oil prices and uncertainty over the Fed's raising interest rates, according to George Calhoun at Stevens Institute. I don't view this as being a correction. I view it as being a response to these events and, um, you know, the market is given back its gains for the year. Stocks took a hit across the board, including tech, bio, and energy, and big losers included even major players like the so-called FANG, Facebook, Apple, Netflix, and Google. The day ended with the Dow way down, 531. The Nasdaq fell more than 171, and the S&P 500 off 65. If that looks bad, China's worse. That economy may be entering a slowdown or a recession even, and. Uh, China is now so important in the world economy that we care about that. Meanwhile, oil fell below $40 a barrel for the first time since 2009. I think much more significant um, for Jersey and the rest of the United States is $40 a barrel price of oil. And, you know, that affects the cost structure of almost every business out there, certainly every manufacturing or transportation related business. In New Jersey, that could impact the shipping business tied to exporting because China moved to prop up its economy by devaluing its currency. The stronger dollar is going to make it harder for companies based in New Jersey to sell their goods abroad, so that could impact them. Uh, on the other hand, uh, consumers are likely to get some cheaper prices when they go down shopping at Walmart. So things like that tend to balance one out. Bernard McSherry heads New Jersey City University's School of Business. He says lower oil prices can boost the local bottom line. If you have an extra six dollars in your pocket every week because it's cheaper at the gas pump, that money goes into your pocket, you spend it without thinking, and it stimulates the economy. On a larger scale, Wall Street's also wondering about whether the Fed will finally raise interest rates. That would mean... The party is over. They're pulling back the punch bowl. Um, it's um, uh, the end of the easy credit uh, orgy that we've been enjoying for a while now, um, and that's not good for the stock market. I don't think we're going to be out of the woods in terms of volatility for at least a, a week or two. The falling market might spook investors, but analysts see a silver lining for consumers, more affordable Chinese imports, and cheaper gas. In Jersey City, I'm Brenda Flanagan, NJTV News. And grim economic news for employees of the Montville-based A&P supermarket chain. Nearly 3,800 workers in 45 New Jersey stores have been told they can expect to be laid off on Thanksgiving Day. The legally required warn notices don't necessarily mean the layoffs will happen. Acme Stop and Shop and Key Foods are competing to acquire A&P stores. They could choose to keep everyone employed. 
The U.S. Forest Service is calling in reinforcements and 32 of New Jersey's bravest are answering the call. That tops tonight's Garden State Express. Our first stop, Newfield, where Fire Chief Sean Riley has been activated too. And he's heading for Montana and points west to help put down fires that have consumed millions of acres already, despite the round-the-clock efforts of Western fire crews. The deaths of three firefighters killed battling wildfires in Washington State this week drove home the danger of the job, but New Jersey fire crews have extensive experience fighting volatile forest fires, especially in the fire-prone Pine Barrens. In announcing the deployment, the State Department of Environmental Protection added, thank you for your service and stay safe. Next to Piscataway, where Rutgers baseball and softball players will finally get their own training facility. Groundbreaking for the $3.3 million privately financed bubble is scheduled to accommodate an optimum crowd of generous donors October 24th, when Scarlet Knights football plays defending champion Ohio State. But they'll start construction now with a view to getting it open in time for preseason in February. The 22,500 square foot facility will house pitching machines, batting cages, bullpen mounds, and a full turf infield. Rutgers first new athletic facility in 28 years will be named for legendary baseball coach Fred Hill, who over 30 years led Scarlet Knights baseball to 941 wins. He's about to be inducted into the Rutgers Athletics Hall of Fame. Finally, Asbury Park, where the undead are at last dead. The famous, infamous, and wildly popular zombie walk started seven years ago when Asbury Park was a bit of a zombie city. Then teeming, wretched masses covered with stage gore stumbled past the decayed ruins of buildings. Soon, the zombies set successive Guinness World Records as the planet's largest gathering of the undead. And Asbury Park arose with new condos and restaurants and metered parking and costs rose too. Organizer Jason Meehan has told his Facebook followers he's pulling the plug after an October 3rd send-off. If it attracts enough money and no silver bullets, there's still some hope the dead may once again be un-dead. And that's how Garden State Express for Friday, August 21st. Something up in your town? Tip us off. Newark police are beefing up patrols in the wake of 36 hours of gun violence that left five people dead and the city in shock. Dozens of officers on desk duty have been reassigned to the streets. The police director says 115 are being pulled from the department's real-time crime center, intelligence posts, and administrative bureaus to increase visibility out on the streets, along with reinforcements from the prosecutor's office and state troopers. And security is being beefed up at movie theaters, too, after violent attacks inside theaters in Louisiana and Tennessee. Regal Cinemas, the nation's largest theater chain, is starting bag checks. Michael Hill reports. The Hussein family on the way to the movies pauses to ponder a policy of Regal Cinemas. It's now checking backpacks and bags of theater goers. I guess it's great with what's been going on. Hopefully things will change in the nation and they won't have to do it. I'm not happy about the whole thing, but I do understand the reasons. Regal Entertainment Group and other theater companies did not respond to our request for an interview. But on Regal's website, its admittance procedure reads, security issues have become a daily part of our lives in America. Regal Entertainment Group wants our customers and staff to feel comfortable and safe when visiting or working in our theaters. To ensure the safety of our guests and employees, backpacks and bags of any kind are subject to inspection prior to admission. We acknowledge that this procedure can cause some inconvenience and that it is not without flaws, but hope these are minor in comparison to increased safety. On its website, Regal Cinemas doesn't state what prompted this policy change, but based on what's happened across the country recently, the answer may not be that elusive. 
gun-toting, knife-wielding theatergoers have left a trail of carnage the last few years, and even with increased security, the crimes continue. After 9-11, theaters checked bags for about two weeks and stopped. Regal's reviving the policy. They wanted to take a proactive stance. Tom DeLuca's National Cinema Security provides security at 175 theaters, including at Regal in New Jersey, where his officers check bags. He acknowledges it could make moviegoers uneasy, and it's not enough. The bag checks is a small step. However, it will not defeat a person who has a weapon on their, on their body, inside their waistband, in their ankle holster, shoulder holster. Bag check is only checking the bag. So there is a, a weakness in that scenario. But moviegoers seem to welcome bag checks. Absolutely, positively, yes. When you go to watch like a, a sports game, like, you know, Giants or whoever, you know, they inspect the bags or if you go to a concert, they inspect the bags. You know, people are people are crazy. People have been crazy. You never know what people are bringing in there and there's lots of shootings that happen. Um, I want to feel safe when I come into the movie, so I'm okay with it. I think it's just a matter of opening it up. I don't think certainly the security people should touch anything. We have protocols. We are active shooter trained. DeLuca says deterrence through high visibility works best, but some wonder if theaters are on a slippery slope to installing metal detectors. DeLuca says metal detectors have proven to make moviegoers stay away altogether, and they hurt a theater's bottom line. In North Brunswick, Michael Hill, NJTV News. Today's NJTV News question, what do you think of Regal Cinema's new policy of inspecting bags? Share your thoughts with, with us on our Facebook page or tweet us. I would not be comfortable with that. I'm going to the movie for the good time and I really don't want to be stopped and deal with any of this type of stuff. I think it's good because I have nothing to hide and it just makes it a safer experience. If they're just searching certain people, I, I don't think that's really helping out because you never know the profile. I don't feel that it's imposing on anyone if it gives people a way of feeling safe. The state says more than 23 billion gallons of pollutants, even raw sewage, pour into New Jersey's waterways each year from old pipes that combine stormwater and wastewater. New regulations require New Jersey towns replace them at a potential cost of hundreds of millions of dollars. 18 cities and utilities asked to opt out. Their requests were denied because the state considers the issue that urgent. Erin Delmore explains why. When flash floods drench Scotch Plains or pummel mountainside, it does more than stop traffic. It wreaks havoc on sewer systems. Raw sewage can carry pathogens and viruses uh, that can um, make people sick. Uh, ear infections, gastrointestinal disease. I mean, we were just hearing about this um, with the upcoming Olympics in, in um, Brazil. That's the exact same thing that we're talking about here. Much of New Jersey relies on century-old infrastructure called Combined Sewer Overflow, or CSO. Those are the metal and concrete pipelines that run under our roads, homes, and businesses. When it rains, water enters CSOs through storm drains. It combines with unsanitary waste headed to a treatment plant, but the extra water overwhelms the system and sends a mixture, raw sewage included, into places where people swim, boat, and fish. There are 217 outfall pipes in New Jersey, and through them, more than 23 billion gallons of raw sewage and other pollutants flow into New Jersey's bays and rivers every year. Do you think it's something people know? Uh, usually when I tell people about it, they're shocked. They're like, really? In the United States? You know, in New Jersey? Um, so no, I don't think it's something, but they do notice that it smells funny after a rainstorm. New York, New Jersey Baykeeper and Hackensack Riverkeeper sued the state and won. The DEP issued individual permits to 25 cities and utilities that operate combined sewer systems. Public notification is required. Operators have three to five years to come up with detailed plans for upgrades. This is a generational challenge for these cities. In many of the cities, these, this will be the biggest public works expenditure they'll have over the next couple of decades. But at the same time, it's really an opportunity to invest in their infrastructure in a way that makes them grow stronger. If they learn from other cities across the country. One place that's introducing new technology? Camden. Through building new parks and rain gardens, the city's capturing stormwater where it falls and beautifying neighborhoods. We took a tour of North Jersey's waterways, through the Arthur Kill between Staten Island and New Jersey, up Newark Bay for a glimpse of Bayonne, and into the lower Passaic River between Harrison and Newark. 
we're on the Passaic River, um, and you can see the beautiful new waterfront park. Um, you know, these cities, their strength is their waterways, and so it's our hope that through this permitting process, they're going to reconnect themselves to the waterways and to cleaner water. The first steps toward cleaner water are quick and easy. Keep litter out of the streets so it doesn't overload storm drains. And conserve water. The less that goes down the drain, the less that has to be treated, especially during rainstorms. I'm Erin Delmore, NJTV News. The wrap-up to Atlantic City's Summer Beach Concert Series was a barn burner. More than 30,000 people came out for the country trio Rascal Flats, armed with cowboy hats and cold hard cash to fuel the gambling capital's hobbled economy. A legislative bill would give top acts tax credits for return performances, but it's already running into resistance. Here's Maddie Orton. 50,000 people packed onto the beach last weekend for a Maroon 5 concert. A reminder of the kind of big crowds a big name performer can attract. It's also a number cited by those for and against a new bill providing tax credits to other A-list artists performing in Atlantic City. Look what happened in Atlantic City this past weekend. 50,000 people showed up. I want to make that the norm of what ha happened to the entertainment uh, region of Atlantic City. They were there and Maroon 5 was there without a tax credit. So it kind of makes the case. The bill will effectively establish a 100% state income tax exemption for top-rated national performers who commit to perform periodically in Atlantic City. The credit kicks in after an entertainment or sports A-lister has performed at least four times in a taxable year within the Atlantic City Tourism District. After those shows, the credit can be claimed during the remainder of that year for performances in Atlantic City and other New Jersey venues. State Senator Tom Kane Jr. co-sponsors the bipartisan bill. Gaming has always been one of Atlantic City's mainstays, but it won't be you know, as robust a revenue stream as it was in the past. And so therefore, we need to make sure that the pillar that is entertainment is, is even stronger than it is today in Atlantic City. Kane says Las Vegas' artists and residents like Britney Spears at Planet Hollywood have transformed the city's entertainment scene, and that this bill will encourage occasional headliners to become frequent flyers. These entertainers are not coming into any venue just about New Jersey four times. But McKinnis says tax incentives play a small role in determining where people do business, and that in the state's current financial situation, it doesn't make sense. At this time, when we can't pay for all the things that we're obligated to pay for, and when our transportation network is in shambles, and you want to put the money into the, the pockets of people who are already making 12 million a year? Isam Hussein says it's worth it. The owner of Three Brothers Pizza Palace says business has been down 30 percent this year and concerts provide a welcome income boost. Similar from the 4th of July weekend. Yep, we'd we'll love to see days like that every week. The tax idea, okay, if they get in, like I said, you know, piece of the cake and we'll get in a bottle visit, it's a great. So might as well just like give them a break so we can make some money. One thing the legislation does not address in detail, who qualifies as an A-list performer. The bill's language states top-ranked artists will be identified through a national review compiled by the Secretary of State. In Atlantic City, I'm Maddie Orton for NJTV News. The nation climbed out of the Great Recession, but New Jersey's been lagging behind the economic growth spurt. In the last two months, the state lost more than 26,000 jobs, even as the jobless rate fell. To keep jobs here and to create new jobs, the Christie administration has spent $6 billion, a billion this year alone, in tax breaks to lure companies here or keep them here. Critics say a good deal for business might be a bad break for taxpayers. Michelle Sakurka is president of the New Jersey Business and Industry Association. Thank you always, as, as always, for joining us. Are we getting a return on our investment here? We absolutely are getting a return on our investment. And let's just put this into context. Um, we haven't yet spent the six billion, okay? It's set aside for the incentive programs. Actually, to date, um, we've spent 64 million. And if you want to talk about return on investment, that equates to $734 million in private investment in the state of New Jersey. Uh, that is 1,900 new permanent jobs in the state of New Jersey. 
about 3,000 construction jobs in the state of New Jersey, I would say that's return on investment. Some of these contracts are written in a way that the, the incentives, the benefits have a 35-year rollout, but the companies only have to stay in the state for 15 years. How does that work? Well, first, they, do, they have to earn the incentive dollars. Okay? They have to create the jobs. They have to build the buildings. The people have to get here. And think about that, Mary Alice. When they get here, they're contributing back to, to the, the coffers of the state. You know, we're taxing that income that's coming in. Um, but in terms of the return on investment, as you ask, you know, once we have all those jobs here, that is creating new income to the state of New Jersey. What does your association recommend for small businesses? For small business, well, we are a small business association, predominantly small business. Right. And the incentive programs, the new under the Economic Opportunity Act, the incentive programs do reach down to small business. This is something new. This is something exciting. We haven't seen this before. Um, in some of the urban growth zones, um, you only have to create eight new jobs in order to be eligible for an incentive program. Shifting to those job numbers, unemployment is now below 6%. That's good, but we did lose, what, 26,100 26, jobs in July. Mm -hmm. How is that good for the state? Well, we are climbing out, um, and we are climbing out at a, so, a slower pace. The numbers tell us that. Um, the, we have had a tough time, and we've had the perfect storm in the state of New Jersey over the past few years. We are still, believe it or not, we are still recovering from Sandy. People forget that. And we've had been hit by, you know, two storms in a row. We've been hit by tough tourism seasons. You know, this summer, I don't think we got the pop at the shore that we thought we would get for the first time post Sandy. Um, so we saw a decline in hospitality, a big decline in hospitality. Yesterday, we talked to David Pringle of the Clean Water Act, and he said uh, green investment, green building is good for the economy. Do you agree? I do agree. I, I believe in sustainable growth, which means that we incorporate green all across what we do in the state of New Jersey. I think we get return on investment when we think sustainable growth. Okay. Michelle Sakurka, thanks for being here. Thank you so much. Ahead of Labor Day, students are already packing off to college, prepared to sandwich into tiny dorm rooms with shared bathrooms and historic carpet stains. Not at the College of New Jersey, where the spanking new lodging might make you want a college do-over yourself. Brianna Venosi reports. It doesn't even feel like college. It feels like going out into the real world and buying your own apartment. That's what the College of New Jersey was hoping for. This new campus town project is a $120 million mixed-use development on the Ewing campus. Construction began two years ago, and students, parents, and neighbors got their first glimpse Wednesday. The students who live in the apartments of Campus Town will be a part of a unique community, one that provides the opportunity for them to live independently, study and prepare themselves to enter their profession and communities as leaders and still be very close to the academic and social life of the campus proper. It's nearly 400,000 square feet of housing and retail amenities. Students live here, above the stores and restaurants. 446 one, two, and four bedroom apartments, brand new. It's really amazing. All the, the bathroom is really large and everything looks really comfortable. Here, with all the retailers and the shops and the restaurants, he doesn't have to drive anywhere if he doesn't want to. Everything is accessible right here. The credit is being given to a public-private partnership between the college and the developer PRC Group, made possible by the New Jersey Economic Stimulus Act of 2009. It allows private capital to be invested in public institutions, and it means the cost is isn't borne by taxpayers or students. Up until the time the, the act was passed, um, there couldn't be private-public partnerships. So you couldn't build a building like this and not charge it off to the school. Um, schools today, everybody knows, higher education, it's very expensive. The school couldn't afford any more debt. Most schools can't afford any more debt, and they can't afford to build beautiful buildings like you see around us right now. It's just too expensive. More than 400 jobs are being created. The retailers include Barnes & Noble, Enterprise Car Service, Spencer Savings Bank, and several other restaurants and businesses. The mayor of Ewing says tax revenue is projected to be about $37 million over a 20-year period. He's got hopes for even more long-term results. 
I think uh, once the students come here and realize what all is available right here in Ewing Township, I'm hoping that they want to actually stay and live in Ewing Township and raise their families in there. Huge game changer. Um, my brother's applying to schools right now, so everywhere we go, he like looks at all the dorms and stuff, and these are so nice. Like Not many schools have stuff like this, so this is a huge upgrade. A second phase will open next summer, including housing for another roughly 200 students. Living on campus, it's like really limited. There's not a lot of places for students to live, so I was really excited. Students are scheduled to move in starting this weekend. The hope is these businesses won't just draw them to campus, it'll keep them here. So far, Barnes & Noble is the only one up and running. The rest are scheduled to open this fall. In Ewing, I'm Brianna Venozzi, NJTV News. You know you've got a cool backyard when the neighbors drop in unannounced. Hey, baby bear, leave the floor alone. A Rockaway family got a nature lesson they likely didn't count on when Mama Bear and her five babies came for a teddy bear's picnic and a pool party broke out. By the looks of the water color, the bear family did need a good bath and the human family's going to need a new floaty. I'm Mary Alice Williams. For all the men and women of NJTV News, thanks for being here. Grab your floaties. New Jersey manufacturers, auto insurance and more for New Jersey Business and Industry Association members and their employees. PSENG, serving customers, strengthening the business community, and investing in New Jersey's future. The members of the New Jersey Education Association, making public schools great for every child. And Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, an independent licensee of the Blue Cross and Blue Shield Association. Whether it's your home or business, the New Jersey Association of Realtors works diligently to protect your interests as a property owner. We advocate for you on the issues that matter, here in Trenton and in your neighborhood. As a voice for real estate, the New Jersey Association of Realtors supports initiatives that maintain home ownership and foster thriving communities in the great garden state. More about us at njar.com.